going to show you how to work with fonts that are designed to be layered. I'm Kara Plichinich, and I help creatives up their game with inspiration and know-how. Here, you'll find beginner-friendly projects and tutorials for Photoshop, photography, design, and more. Be sure to check the description below for any links or free downloads mentioned in this video, and hit me up at karaplichinich.com to check out my full library of in-depth courses. And while you're there, grab my free creative toolkit, an ever-growing collection of Photoshop actions, templates, design assets, and more. So it's important to keep in mind that what I'm going to show you today can work uh, with any layerable font, any font that is designed to be layered. Um, today, I'm going to be using this font here called Bimbo, believe it or not. Uh, and that is because I recently f came across this and look at all of the font uh, options <laughs> that it has. I mean, I forget, but it's like 20 something, um, including catch words and multiple dingbat collections. If you watch my tutorials, you know I love dingbats. Um, so there is just like unbelievable wild possibility here. So I'm going to show you how this works. And obviously, if you're using another layerable font, um, your possibilities will vary depending on the font. But here is a look at how this one works. So we've got the word let's here for let's layer up. The word let's is in the script version of the font. So once you get your initial version down, in this case, script, then what you want to do is duplicate that layer. So I'm just pressing um, Command or Control J on my keyboard, Control J for the PC people. Um, and now we see that this is called script copy. Let's go up here and instead of script, so we have to scroll down to the script options. So here's script and you'll notice that script is capable of not one, but two shadows that come with it. So we're going to keep it simple and I'm just going to choose script shadow. And you'll notice that now we have the original script layer and then we have the shadow layer. Now it looks really weird because the shadow is on top. So let's rename this script shadow so that we can just keep ourselves <laughs> straight here in the layers panel. And let's also change the color. So I'm going to change it to this dark color. And now we can turn our script layer back on and we'll drag the script shadow layer below because as a shadow, it should be in back. And ta-da, look at that. Very nice. Okay, let's move on here to this, the word layer. This is a font called part of Bimbo collection. It's called condensed main and we have it here in red. Let's duplicate this layer again. So again, command or control J. And this time I'm going to change the main um, up here to condensed. Here's main. I want um, stroke. So I'm going to click that. Now it looks like nothing happened here. Let's rename this. This one is called condensed stroke. And let's change the color. Ta-da! And so you can see what's happening. So if I hide the main layer, we see we're just left with the stroke layer. Stroke, of course, means outline. And if we hide that and turn the main one on, then we just see that. So they are layered. Um, and they are meant to go together. Let's duplicate the um, condensed stroke layer one more time. So again, Command or Control J. And this time we're going to choose condensed decor one. Fancy. Look what just showed up in here. Isn't that neat? And now let's change that color. Looking good. And we'll rename this layer. Condensed Decor 1. So we can see that this word layer is made up of three copies of the same 
type face, the, the bimbo type, but then we've chosen a different subset. So we have the main, the stroke, and the decor on top. Let's uh, duplicate this one more time, Commander Control J. And this time we're gonna change it to the condensed, here's the decor again. This time we'll go down to condensed shadow and you'll see this also has two shadow options, but I'm just gonna choose the first one. And now it looks all weird because it's on top of everything. Let's change the color and rename it condensed shadow one. So I'm just double clicking right on the words here to rename it. And then I'm gonna drag it down underneath the condensed main. Ta-da! Gorgeous, right? So these are all still just regular type layers. Um, let's move on down here to the word up. So this is the sans serif. So it's called sans main. So main is just kind of like regular solid letters. So um, that's the main, that's nice. Let's duplicate it. And let's choose again, sans main, here it is. And let's choose sans stroke. And this time let's make the color, uh, this fun aqua color, and we'll rename this sans stroke. It just helps to keep, I mean, you don't have to do all this renaming, but oh my goodness. Um, it's really helpful. Let's duplicate that one more time. And this time we're gonna choose Sans Decor 3. And we have fun little dots everywhere. Let's change that. So I'm changing the color, by the way. I've got my Type Tool active. And with the Type Tool active, if you open your swatches panel, you can just click on a color and apply it. So if you don't have your swatches panel open, you can find it like all of your other panels from the window menu right down here. So I'm just clicking and then um, Photoshop will recolor it, which is really cool. Um, and now we're gonna make use of both shadow layers. So I'm gonna duplicate this. Oh wait, we forgot to rename it. That is Sans Decor 3. Okay, we'll duplicate this again. This time we'll choose Sans Shadow 1. It's on top of everything, that's okay. We'll color it red and we'll rename it Sans Shadow One and drag it underneath the main version. See what I'm saying? And then we're gonna add the other type of shadow because we're just really gonna punch this up. So I'm going to duplicate that one more time and we'll change it to Sans Shadow two it's kind of a long list so sorry it's a lot of scrolling but it's worth it okay and for this one let's make this shadow the dark blue again now it looks weird don't panic sans shadow two this one needs to go under the one and what's really cool is if we come up in the um, opacity for that particular layer and we lower it down, you can see kind of how that works. So eh, maybe like 20% or something. And then check out all the cool dingbats. Ta-da! Let's layer up. So if you've never played with layered fonts, they are super, super fun. Designers, uh, they must put so much effort into this. It's, it, it's wild. Um, so explore, look around, find a layered set a layered collection of fonts that you like. Um, and, you know, if you think this is fun, you should see all these dingbats. So the dingbats are where I got all these fun arrows and swoopy doops and stars. And there's just, I mean, it's too much to even show you, but I guess I can try and show you one. Let's see, we'll open up. Um, let's go to one of these collections. So I'm looking at the glyphs panel. And that is accessible by choosing Window Glyphs. And then you can come up here, choose the Bimbo font, choose one of the decor subsets, and then you can scroll through and see all of the characters and all of the dingbats. Look at that, how fun. There's little clouds, there's a whole collection of banners. I mean, it's just, oh my gosh. Um, 
I can spend all day on this. And then how you insert those dingbats is you just use your type tool to click and start a new type layer right here. And then you would just double click on any of the dingbats and they will appear here and they're text just like anything else. And then you can style them, you can move them, scale them, all that stuff. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you again at the next tutorial.